Hello everyone, this is Professor Patterns, and in this video, we're going to be looking at the code interpreter function on OpenWebUI. Now, first, let me show you how it looks like. So here I asked Claude to create a script to train a machine learning model that predicts whether or not a movie review is going to be positive, negative, etc. It's using the IMDb data set. And it writes all of this code. And then here, if I hit run, you'll see that it actually is going to run on my local Jupyter Notebook interface. So it is using the resources currently off my computer. And this data is local to my computer. It's not really being shared anywhere. It's running all of these Python script right now. And once it gets done, we will be able to see here all the way at the bottom. We can see that currently it's running and now it's done. It's trained this model. And at the end, we should be able to see some model results. Now, I also asked it, to direct all of the logs to a separate file. So that's what it did here. So if you take a look, it loaded in some data. It had 25,000 training samples, uh, 25,000 test set samples. It trained over 10 epoch. And this is the test accuracy, 0 0.4977. So it was able to train an entire machine learning model just using the resources off my computer. That is the benefit of linking Jupyter Notebooks to OpenWebUI so that it can now execute much more than just basic code like Python, list reversal, and those kind of things. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started and try to understand how we can set this up. Now, before we actually get started with how we can connect Jupyter Notebook to OpenWebUI, the first thing that we need to do is actually install Jupyter Notebooks. Now, if you're a complete beginner, what I would recommend first is go through these lecture or these uh, videos on beginners Windows development setup for uh, either Windows or for Mac. So I'm going to link both of these videos in the description. Once you get done with that, the next part is to actually install Jupyter Notebooks. Now there are a couple of ways in which you can do this. Um, a really easy and simple way is just go into your command prompt. And as long as if you type in Python, it opens up Python interpreter. Uh, what you would do is pip install Jupyter. That's one way, right? And this is going to install your Jupyter Notebooks for you. The other way is you can create a separate environment and then install Jupyter Notebook within that environment. If you want to work with containers, there's also a Jupyter Notebook container that you can use. So there are a couple of ways in which you can do this. The easiest way is just pip install Jupyter. Now, once Jupyter Notebook is installed, what you would do is go here to your command prompt window and type in Jupyter Notebook. And what this is going to do is that it's going to open up Jupyter Notebook for you here. Now you can create a new Python 3 um, kernel and then just type in whatever Python code. So print hello, and that's going to allow you to create this uh, Python code in a Jupyter Notebook or Google Colab type interface if that's what you're familiar with. So now that Jupyter Notebook has been installed, I'm gonna cancel out of this. The only thing is when I'm connecting to OpenWebUI, OpenWebUI also needs to have access to Jupyter Notebook. So there is a slightly a slight modification of the actual Jupyter Notebook command that I did end up using. So let me cancel out of here. And I'm going to show you the exact command that I use. It's Jupyter Notebook. I specify IP equals 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.0. No browser, allow root. And I said, don't give it a token. Don't give it any password. And um, also disable the check XSRF. Now, once I execute this, it does open up Jupyter Notebook exactly the same as how it would before. Um, we will be able to now access localhost 8888, and we should be able to see the Jupyter Notebook interface. Now, to set this up with OpenWebUI, let's go here to admin panel. And uh, don't worry, because I have all of this code that I have used, for example, for uh, running Jupyter Notebook posted in the description. Click on settings, and then click on code execution. Now, I have a Jupyter URL, a Jupyter URL, and this is OpenWebUI version 0.5.20, the latest version that has come out, um, I think, about five hours ago on March the 6th. So here we can see that I have a Jupyter URL and the Jupyter URL for code interpreter. So that's a little bit different. I set the authentication as none for both. So none here and none here. And that's because we specified that we don't want to have a token or just an empty token. Now, 
we can have a specific prompt for the code interpreter, like, um, oh, only run code like this, or don't open up files, or if you're saving logs, save the logs to a separate file, uh, and all of those things we can add over here. Now, we will enable the code execution for both, and everything else can pretty much remain standard. And again, I'm gonna copy and paste the link here in this description. Now, suppose that you want to change all of your default settings for Jupyter. It is pretty easy, you don't need to do this. But if you just type in Jupyter config um, dir, and that's going to show you all where your config file lives for Jupyter Notebooks. This you can then open with something like VS Code, and it's gonna show up something like this. So over here, if you want some specific comments, or for example, I put the server app token as this empty. So it's not actually going to ask for a token. So I put that as default so that every time I run Jupyter Notebook, it by default is going to run without a token. So if you wanted to change some of the configuration files, that's how you would do so. Now let's go back here to Open Web UI, and I can select an existing model that I have from Open Router, or if I want, I could even run some of my local um, LLMs, but let's just keep this simple. I'm just gonna ask or enable Code Interpreter and ask it to create a Python script to print hello, All right? We'll start off as just that, and we'll see that it does use Jupyter Notebook because it we see here it is starting um, the kernel and then based on that kernel, it then shuts down the kernel after it utilizes it. And here we can see that created the script and if we run it and let's also take a look here. So let's run this and we can see that it also executes in real time. So that is how you can link your Jupyter Notebooks to Open Web UI. Now there are a couple of things that we kind of went over before, but let's go back here to admin settings and then select code execution. So we see that there is a code interpreter prompt template and it says use um, leave it empty to use the default prompt. Now what does that default prompt actually look like? So this is the full default prompt. It says that you have access to a Python shell that runs directly in the user's browser. Um, you can, it can handle a wide array of libraries. Uh, it can do API calls to use it. You must enclose it within this, um, format. And I'm going to also copy and paste this code interpreter, uh, prompt template in the description. So you can definitely also take a look there. Uh, if you wanted to change it, what you would do is to simply copy that over here and then you can make whatever edits that you would like. So one example of an edit that I can think of is um, I don't really like to have the logs shown here. I like to save the logs into a separate file because we do run into issues sometimes, for example, where um, if I'm training a model, like um, this is the script that I had created. And if I run or execute the script, it will train this machine learning model. It's also going to create all of these different plots for me. And once it gets done training, we can see that the way that it actually gives us the output is going to be, the formatting is going to be a little bit messed up here. So let me just make sure that it is running the kernel and there we go. So we can see that the output format does not look that great, which is why um, over here, the next prompt that I had provided to it was basically save the, or redirect the TensorFlow logs to a file in the script. So what I could do now is go to my admin panel settings and then select code execution. And I can just add this to be a part of the prompt. So um, let's say something like redirect uh, logs to a separate file. And in this case, it doesn't need to be all the logs, just say TensorFlow. And once I hit save, that's going to uh, essentially run this prompt template every time we do the code execution. So that is where this would be uh, coming in quite handy. And that's pretty much it for this video. Thank you all for tuning in. If you want me to cover uh, more tutorials, then please leave a comment in the comment section below. I really appreciate all of your support and I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye.